Hello guys. Now let's look at this question. For cash settled share based payment transaction, it will help. Okay. It says that on 1st January 2001, an entity grants 100 cash share appreciation rights to each of its 500 employees on condition that employees continue to work for the entity until 31st December 2003. It says during 2001, 35 employees leave and the entity estimates that a further 60 will leave during 2002 and 2003. During 2002, 40 employees leave and the entity estimates that a further 25 will leave during 2003. And during 2003, 22 employees leave. And I told that 31st December 2003, 150 employees exercised their share acquisition rights. Another 140 employees exercised their share acquisition rights at 31st December 2004. And the remaining 113 employees exercised their share acquisition rights at the end of 2005. When I told that the fair values of the share acquisition rights for each year in which a liability exists as shown below. Together with the intrinsic values at the date of exercise. Okay. So we're given the fair values of the share acquisition rights each year from 2001 to 2004. And we're given the intrinsic value from 2003 to 2005. Now, you see that the Employees started exercising their rights from 2003 and that was when they started giving us the intrinsic value because the intrinsic value, if you remember, is the difference between the fair value of an option and the exercise price, okay, of that option. That difference is the intrinsic value, it's like a gain to the employee. So in this case, how much? the employee will be paid is actually this intrinsic value because it's like the increase from the price of that right at the grant date to the exercise date, right? So that difference is this intrinsic value. You see how we're going to use it. Now, the question requires us to calculate the amount to be recognized in the profit or loss for each of the five years ended 31st December 2005 and the liability to be recognized in the statement of financial position at 31st December for each of the five years. Okay, let's start from 31st December 2001. Firstly is that we need to get the value of the share acquisition right. We can get it from the question. The question told us that in 2001, 35 employees leave now, say the entity estimates that a further 60 will leave during 2002 and 2003. That means the total that will leave for the three years period is the 35 that actually left and the estimate of additional 60 that will leave, that is 95. Okay? So now, at the end of 2001, the value of the share acquisition right to be 500, which is the total number of employees minus 95. Okay, so that will be 405, the employees that will remain. Multiply that by the total number of SAR, which is the share acquisition rights. I will multiply it by the fair value or the price at the end of 2001, which is 14.4. Okay, do the math. It gives you 583,200. All right. Having determined that, then we can easily get the remuneration expense for this current year. And that will be $583,200 upon 3. And that gives us $194,400. So with that, we will debit the remuneration expense with $194,400. And we credit liability with $194,400. At the end of 2002, we'll get a new estimate of the total value of the SAR that will vest. And from the question, 
we're told that in 2002, 40 employees leave. And the entity estimates that a further 25 will leave during 2003. Okay? So that means the total estimates that will leave for the whole three years will be 35 that actually left in 2001. 40 that leaves in this current year. And the estimate of 25 that will leave next year. Therefore, the value of the SAR at the end of this current year will be 500 minus 35 minus 40 minus 25. Okay? That gives us the total number of employees that will remain. If you multiply that by the number of SAR, which is 100, or multiplied by the fair value of the SAR at the end of 2002, which is 15.5, we will get 620,000. Okay? Having determined that, we can then get the cumulative expense at the end of this second year, which will be 620,000 multiplied by two years all upon three years. That gives us 413,303. Hence, the remuneration expense for this current year will be 413,303 minus the remuneration expense for the previous year, which is 194,400. And we have 218,933. So with that, we will debit remuneration expense. We credit liability with 218,933. Now, at the end of 2003, the question two does that. 22 employees leave, okay? Because it will vest. In this current year, that is, we expect employees to start exercising their rights from this current year. So, we can know what has happened actually. So, the total that has left all through the three years that has actually left. In 2001, we had 35 left, 14 in 2002, and now 22. Okay, those were the total that actually left. The liability for the year ended at the 1st December 2003 will be we'll deduct all these that has left, okay, from the total number of employees. However, we need to consider this 150 that exercised his own XAR at the end of 2003 also. It must be considered, okay, because it's the unexercised portion, okay. That would constitute our liability. Therefore, at the end of 2003, the value of the SAR will be 500 minus 35 minus 40 minus 22 and minus 150 that has exercised. Okay? So the total number of employees that left are these 35, 40, 22. If you deduct that from the 500, it gives you 403. So, 403 minus this guy that exercised, okay? So, we have remaining that has not exercised at the end of 2003. Multiplied by their SAR for each of them. Multiplied by the fair value at the end of 2003, okay? Which is 18.20. Then, we have a total of 460,460, okay? Hence, the remuneration expense for the year 2003 will be this 460,460 minus the cumulative expense for 2002, which is 413,333. That leaves us to 47,127. So we debit remuneration expense with that amount and we credit our liability. However, the 150 that has exercised, that means we need to pay that guy, okay? We need to pay him based on the increase in the share price because we gave him a share acquisition right. And 150 employees 
exercised their SCR. Multiply that by the 100 SCR for each of them. Then the intrinsic value, which is the increase in the share price, as given in the correction was 15. So that will be 225. So with this 225, we're going to debit expense, okay? And we're going to credit cash because we pay those that have exercised with 225,000. Now, at the end of 2004, which is 31st December 2004, we were told that 140 employees also exercised. Okay? Therefore, we need to pay those 142. So with that, the value we're going to pay is 140 employees multiplied by the number of SAR per employee multiplied by the increase in the share price, which is 20, the intrinsic value at the end of 2004. Then the total gives us 280,000. So with this 280,000, we will debit expense with 280,000. We will credit cash with 280,000. The remaining that have not exercised at the end of 2004 will be 403, meaning the number of employees that did not leave, minus 150, the ones that exercised in 2003, minus 140, the ones that exercised in 2004, okay? So, the remaining employees that have not exercised, multiply it by the number of share acquisition right? Multiply it by the fair value at the end of 2004, which given in the question is 21.4. So, that gives us 241,820. So, with that, we can determine the remuneration expense relating to this liability for this current year. Now, there is a decrease in liability because in 2003, the liability was 460,460. Now, it is 241,820. So, the liability has decreased by 218,640. Okay. So with that, we're going to debit 218,640 because people are exercising their rights. We are paying. We are going to credit remuneration expense with 218,640. Okay? Credit P and L with that because there's a decrease in liability. Now, at the end, which is 2005, we're told that the remaining 113 exercise their rights. So, no employees left. So the value of those that exercise will be 113 employees. Multiply it by the number of SAR for each employee, which is 100. Multiply it by the intrinsic value, which is the increase in the share price. That gives us 282,500. So with this 282,500, I'm going to debit expense with 282,500. You are going to credit cash with 282,500. Okay? So, all the employees have exercised their rights. Now, for the liability that we still have in our books, because now we don't have liabilities anymore. So, since all employees have exercised their rights, these liabilities at 2004, which is standing at 241,820. Okay, now, no more liability, so we're going to close it by debiting the liability with 241,820. Then we credit remuneration expense, which is POL with 241,820. So, all the accounts are closed. And we have settled all the share acquisition rights. We have settled all the employees as well. And this is how you treat cash settled share based payment you see that it's very different from the equity settled this one you need to keep using the share price at the year end to determine the value of the liabilities unlike the equity settled share based payment 
where the share price of the option you use is that at the grand date. And that is how, that is what you use all through the vesting periods. Okay. So that's it for cash settled share based payments. Thank you very much guys for going this far. Really love you guys. Bye.